Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a few of the Jada Toys collectible figures that I picked up recently. Now, if you haven't heard of Jada Toys, chances are you will very soon, because they're doing something that's very unique in the world of mass-produced collectibles. They specialize in die-cast metal figurines, and they're doing something that's really interesting right now that really not a lot of companies are doing. They are creating these die-cast figures based on very popular characters, from very popular franchises. For example, what I have over here is Iron Man, a completely 100% die cast metal Iron Man that they created for Civil War. Now I did a video on this a while back as well as the Captain America that also came in this line, but they're not done yet. They are at Comic-Con this year and they're showing off a huge wave of other properties and other collectibles that they are coming out with. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to their website. We can check out some of the new stuff that's coming out, but I also wanted to see some of the things that are already already available. They have a line of Suicide Squad figures that are out right now. If you go into stores like Toys R Us, you've probably seen some Ghostbuster stuff as well. But things that I have here, I have not seen in the stores and we're gonna check them out right now. Let's start with this. This is the Mark I Iron Man the very first suit of armor that Iron Man created. And if you see the very first Iron Man movie, that's pretty much where you're gonna see this guy from. But also in the comic books, you know, it just looks like this, this uh, Tin Man abomination that Iron Man came up with as his first suit of armor. And this one is made of 100% die cast metal. Now, some of the other Jada Toys collectibles are not 100% metal. It's really probably more between 70 to 90% metal. And the reason why it keeps flip-flopping like that is uh, really, it's more of a legal thing. Very interesting interview. If you uh, go to Pixel Dan's channel at Comic-Con, he uh, did a walkthrough of the Jada Toys booth. And uh, I'm gonna leave a link to that too, so you can check that out. And uh, it's basically, they can do certain things with certain figures and, um, you know, like articulation may be something that they can only do to a certain degree or, you know, certain companies require certain things from the creators of these toys. Oh, there's another piece of tape here. So that's why everything is not always 100% die cast metal, but they are going to be mostly metal pretty much regardless of which one that you get. So when I didn't even know that this Mark I Iron Man was a thing until like last week because these are starting to come out and they're kind of sneaking up on us. I got this on Amazon and it was, uh, I think like $12. So let's try to get them out. This is gonna be a little bit rough, I can already tell. And here's a look at the Mark I Iron Man armor, which I think works really, really well with this whole die cast metal approach because this entire thing is made from 100% die cast metal and the details on this thing is pretty cool too they even put little dings in his helmet like right here and right here then flipping it around the back you see there's another little ding right here and there's just little dents and scratches and signs of wear and tear all around this guy I love the fact that it's not a solid silver color that there's some color variations inside of it to make it look like it's made from types of metal that weren't just in pristine condition straight off the factory floor, but just put together from a variety of spare parts, which was basically what this armor was formed from. I also like the tanks on the back. I think that that's a very nice detail as well. And just in this armor in general, I love the, the welding mask look that it has um, and the black that is underneath makes it sort of ominous. And just as a little comparison here, he is next to the regular Mark, what is this, Mark 46 Iron Man, I think? And like I said, they work really well together considering that they're both made from uh, characters that are made of metal and they have a really shiny approach to how these are done. And I think that makes the Iron Man figures in particular look incredibly well done. And this is definitely one of my favorite Jada Toys figures because not only is this the OG Iron Man armor, but uh, they just did a really nice job on him too.
Of course you know who this is. This is Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now this is based off the old school turtles, the ones that I grew up with from the old cartoon show. And these particular characters, from what I understand, or these figures, are not going to be available in stores like Walmart and Target and Toys R Us and the big box retailers. Instead, you're going to find them in smaller shops like comic book stores and uh, online venues as well. I got this like I get most of my stuff from Amazon. So if you want to find those there, you can. And they are also going to cost you around $12 or so. You might be able to get them a little bit cheaper. It really just depends. But, you know, I would just stick with the whole $12 to $13 range. Now, this Zontello here is also four inches tall. And there's also a six inch Leonardo in this line. And he comes with... Uh, armor like a samurai type armor um, very reminiscent of the uh, third turtles movie that no one but me seems to enjoy so uh, I'm gonna free this Donatello and we're gonna get a closer look at him as well now next up is Donatello and as you can see this is based off the old school 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and he has a very vibrant paint job. Now this figure is not made out of 100% die cast metal. It has die cast metal in it of course for the most part but some parts of him or his accessories rather are not metal. For example his bow staff right here this is not metal this is a plastic and you can also put it in his hands. Now this is another thing that's different about this particular figure is the fact that he has articulation. It's limited articulation, but it is there. You can move his arms up and down and you can also move his head from side to side. It also has like a little, a little bit of a rock to it, but you're not gonna really notice unless you move it from side to side. The bow staff can fit into his hands pretty well that way. Um, but there's no swivel at the wrist, so you can't get him to hold on to the staff with both hands, but you can just have him hold it like this. And then also, if you flip him on the back, you see that there's also a place on his back where you can just slide the bow staff in right here if you don't want him to actually carry it. Now, for the paint, mostly is very well done. There's a little chip on the top of his head, but one thing that I really like about this uh, particular figure is that um, it seems like they're doing a better job of hiding the molding lines. Um, on some of the previous figures, I remember there being a very pronounced molding line, like on the Deadpool, for example. You can sort of see a molding line on the top of uh, Donatello's head, but it's very faint, so it doesn't stand out as much. So it doesn't necessarily look like he's been smushed together from two separate pieces and I do like that a lot. Now that being said, I have one more figure to show you and he goes along very well with Donatello. And here is Leonardo, the leader of the turtles. Now one thing that I do have to say, while I do appreciate that they put these uh, little plastic sleeves on the weapons so you don't damage the weapons, I did accidentally damage a part of the figure. You flip it on the back, you see that there's these two sheaths right here for his sword, and I broke mines off because they put so much. Th those twist ties, there was one on Donatello, but on Leonardo, there was one around his waist, and then there was two on his arms. I mean, they really secured him down, and you know, just trying to push him out of that plastic um, prison. I ended up ripping this thing off. So, um, you know, this is nothing that a little dab of super glue can't fix. And I'm sure that it'll, you know, it'll just go right there and it'll be good as new. But uh, that is something to be aware of. You have to be careful. But as you can see, Leonardo here looks very similar to Donatello. Um, the only big difference is, of course, the color scheme and then the um, his teeth, the half smirk on his face is in a different position than Donatello. So as you can see, Donatello's is located on the opposite side of Leonardo. Donatello's is on the right, Leonardo's is on the left. Uh, but his swords are not die cast metal. It would be very awesome if they were, but they are not, they are made of plastic. And of course they are removable and he has the same exact articulation as Donatello. And he can also move his head around and everything. And they did a very good job with the paint once again. Um, nothing that I, you know, I need to write home about, you know, it looks pretty good. And I'm a big fan of these Turtles figures because they are from the era of the Turtles that I know and love. And I just really like that nostalgia factor. Now, there's two more. You still have uh, Raphael and there's still Michelangelo. Those two are out there as well. I'm going to have to pick those up eventually. But for now, we can bask 
in the collective glory of Leonardo, Donatello, and the Mark I Iron Man armor. So yeah, guys, once again, these are all from Jada Toys. They're going to cost you within the range of between $10 to $13 on Amazon. And uh, there's a whole bunch more of these figures coming out from Jada in the future. So maybe this could be the next big trend. Maybe the next thing that you might want to get into because um, right now they certainly have a thumbs up for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Jeremy and I'll talk to you later.